be able to calculate, for example, your VAT and how much you might have to pay to the inland revenue or how much you might be able to get back and reclaim. So we're going to use a typical example here. Now, set up a spreadsheet. I'm assuming that most people can set up a spreadsheet like this. I will show you some tips and tricks. However, this is B and he produces honey, as you're probably aware, and he needs to purchase some items. So he needs to purchase some glass jars. Now, each glass jar costs him one pound to purchase. So there you go. There's one pound going in. Each jar lid costs him 50p. So there you go, 50p. Each label costs him 20p. And the honey itself costs 40p that goes into the jar. Now you will notice now already that at the moment those are not in currency. So select those cells, go up to this section here, and then put the format of currency. There you go, nice and simple. Now what we're going to do now is that B is going to order 1,000 of each item. So I'm going to just type 1,000 in each one of those. And we'll show you a trick in a minute that makes your life easier. However, there we go, nice and simple. So the subtotal is how much it's going to cost to buy those items. So he buys a thousand jars at one pound. Now you could do the maths in your head, or you could write a formula so equals cell C3 there, uh, and then you get the star key, which is the way to hold the shift down and press above the eight like that, and then times by the D3 cell, press enter, and there you go. Now if you click on that cell there and go along that little black dot there and drag and pull down, look at that, it does it all for you. Now. Businesses have to pay VAT, especially if you're registered for VAT, because you can claim this back on your purchases. So you might want to work out how much can you claim back from the government, how much extra VAT you're paying. Now, you pay VAT at 20%. So of that subtotal amount, you need to pay an extra 20% VAT. The way to do that is dead simple. Press the equals key. Click in that cell E3 there. Press the star key again and times it by 0 0.2. Well, why is that? Because that's 20%. So there's 20% of it. Click in that cell there and pull it down. Ah, there you go. There's your VAT amount. Now, your net total is going to be the amount that you have to pay at the end. The way to work it out, very simply, equals key. Press that cell there, which is cell E3. Go on the plus option. Choose cell F3. Press enter. There you go. You now have the amount you have to pay your supplier in total. What you can do is total up these cells here, and you can do it in different ways, but we're going to use the auto sum feature. See how I click that cell there? I can then just select the ones I want for my auto sum. There you go. Press enter, and those are my totals. That's the amount of VAT I pay. That's the amount in total that I have to pay to produce my jars of honey. And it really is as simple as that. That is how I've calculated my purchases. We'll now take a look at a spreadsheet which can work out my revenue and then we'll find out how much I have to pay or how much I get back in VAT. Okay, let's build on our spreadsheet now and look at how this impacts when we do some sales. So in this case here, I've made another table below here and he sells one item of honey. I'm going to assume that he sells the honey at £3 per jar. So there's our £3 and we'll assume he sold 800 jars of honey. So he's still got 200 jars left. Again, gross revenue is how much is he expected to make in total from those selling price of £3. So we just do a simple sum equals cell C13 multiplied by cell D13, and we work out he has £2,400. The VAT we know is 20%, so we need to find 20% of the gross revenue because that's what the government will be taking back off him from those sales. So equals, click on that cell E13, multiply it before, like we did before by 0.2. That's the amount of VAT he's paid. And the net revenue is actually how much he really gets to keep in his amount of money. So it's going to be equals the gross revenue less the VAT, which means in this case here that £1,920 is what he gets to keep. Now, regarding VAT, he will get a bill at the end of every quarter. He either has to pay VAT or he has to claim it back and get some money back. So... What you tend to do is your purchases, as you see up here, is money that you can reclaim, and that is down here. Your sales is what you have to pay. So it's a difference between those two numbers. And as you can see here, in those differences of those two numbers, he's going to get a bill. So we could actually work out the difference. So we could say a little formula equals what we've got here, what we actually have are owed, for example, minus what we've got to pay, and that gives us a bill to pay. 
of £60. That's obviously where I put the minus. You do it the way around if you want. It doesn't matter whichever way you understand it being. But that means in this case here, B would have to send off a cheque at the end of the quarter to the government for £60 saying he actually owes the money. It all depends on how you want to work it out and how you want to calculate it. However, that is how VAT works. Quite simple, quite straightforward when you get your head around it. Where it gets complex is that you may have different rates of VAT for different projects and products. And also it can impact, for example, if you have different statuses of business. But I just want to show you a simple example. And maybe you can incorporate this into your business planning and models that you build. And you can see how Excel spreadsheets or spreadsheets in general, because obviously we don't have to use Excel, there are great alternatives out there like LibreOffice, can help to develop your business planning and business modeling activities.